Unboxing time. So um, I've got the new Bifaco case and a knife. Um, <laughs> I got the DIY version. So um, I was just gonna unbox it and show you what all comes with it and then um, take you through the building of it. So here we go. This came all the way from Spain, by the way. So good old Kansas. Uh oh, I think I need my assistant already. Okay. The box inside of a box. Come on. All right. Remove that one. There we go. All right. So this is the actual box, I guess. That's the shipping box. Let's see how this goes. Oh, look at this. It's got a handle. Neat. It's like a briefcase. <laughs> okay. Wow. This is super cool looking. In case you haven't seen all the videos yet, this case is super nice. It has this comes with this plastic like top, it's like a deck saver kind of thing. Um, this is very well packed. Kudos. Oops. Okay. Here we go. So here's the case. Um, like I said, it's the DIY version, so all these boxes on the inside must be all the parts. Here we go. Lid. Ooh. That's cool. This is nice. It reminds me of like a turntable lid. <laughs> like yeah. a cover for a turntable. Okay, here we go. Yep, a bunch of boxes in here. Seven U case kit. Looks like power stuff. I uh, got the power cable, bags of parts, power supply stuff. This rolled up thing is no doubt the rails. This is circuit board, board or boards probably. And this one is um, got a European power supply and also uh, the brick is all that's in here. Plus it did come with the US power supply as well, or power cord, I mean. So there you go. So um, I'm gonna walk you through me building this. Here's all the awesome connections on the back and the Visa connections on the bottom so you can mount it. Cool, cool. The first step is with this big circuit board called the trolley bus with great power comes great responsibility, it says. So, um, there's already been a build video for this whole thing, so I'm not gonna get super detailed. If you wanna see that, it's Molten Music Technology. So I've watched that actually twice to prepare myself. Um, the first step is kind of the funkiest thing about the whole thing. You have to put the power connectors on in the normal things for your rack. But it has to like straddle both sides of the circuit board like that. And you actually solder both sides. Um, and then this arrow on the black part aligns with that arrow on the circuit board. Um, so that's a little funky. There's like a million of them too. Okay, so, so there's 28 total that you have to do that with. So good times. So um, you can watch his video. He kind of figured out to solder one leg on each side to get it lined up and then kind of push down on it while you're doing the other. So this should be interesting.
Okay, I'll show you my progress. So I did like every other one initially, and it kind of helps balance it out. It makes it a little bit easier after it balances on itself. And I just soldered one, one of the terminals on each side of each one. Now I'm gonna go through and solder the rest and then do the same thing to the other half. This is definitely kind of awkward and unconventional, but it um I would say just find your find your own method that works for you because it took a little trial and error to get it just right. Also I noticed when you heat the pins up and start soldering them, if don't put any pressure away from it because they do want to move. A couple of mine like pushed out a little bit, like not too much to interfere with like a plug plugging into them, but they did do that a little bit. Next update, I got all those crazy power connectors soldered. They're relatively straight. I had it down by the end, finally. So next up, we got four resistors and four LEDs and a Molex connector and a terminal block. So I'll check back in after all those things. Um, resistors, of course, Check them before you put them in to make sure they're right. And LEDs, long leg is positive. Here we go. All right, those things were easy. Assuming I did them right. Bing. So next up are the DC regulators. That's these little box things. Um, three of them are 12 volt, one of them's 5 volt, and they have very specific places they go. And there's no way to mess it up because they do have different pinouts, and it's, there's no way to turn them the wrong way either, so that's cool. These are really cool. It sure beats soldering all the components. I wonder why more manufacturers haven't used these. Because any power supply I've built, it's all just components mostly. Um, these seem way easier. Maybe they're expensive or something. All right, so there's the trolley bus board done. Got the four power regulators, the terminal and the Molex connector, LEDs, resistors, and a million connectors. So next up, we are doing I.O. board. Looks like this. So it looks like we're going to start with some resistors, a switch, more IDC connectors. So we have more power, plus we have these different sized ones like for the... Oh, they're like for the ZRS jacks and other stuff we'll learn about later. And then also these JST connectors that are for these unbalanced connectors and various other things. And then another Molex. So, a bunch of little things and then and the power input and the screw terminals and this stuff actually sticks out the back. You have to be careful in lining it up right. So we do all this other stuff first and then I'll get to that.
so here is the IO board or whatever they call it. Um, basically, I got power connection, USB, MIDI, TRS plugs, and a whole lot of things to plug stuff in. Um, I don't know how much of my uh, soldering got picked up with my camera before it died, but um, it was all pretty straightforward. The important part was, like it says in the instructions, on all these things that have to fit through the case to solder just a couple legs till you make sure they fit, and then test fit it to make sure it's all good, which mine is, and um, then you solder the rest of it. That looks awesome. Um, so the last step before assembling the case is this thing in the bob, which is hooks to the switch. Um, you cut off the blue wire, you don't need it, and then you have to tin, tin these wires. They go up through these holes and solder into the corresponding spots. So I'm going to do that, and then it's on to assembling the case. Okay, so I got the weird power switch wire thing. So you loop it through the holes underneath and solder it on the bottom. Careful not to touch the insulation with your soldering iron like I did. Fortunately, it didn't totally melt it. Okay, so next up um, is assembling the case. You start with the rubber feet and the power switch, and then you put the boards in, and then the rails, and then on the boards, they hook together with this Molex cable. Um, power switch is really cool. And, you know, this wire, it connects on with that. Pretty funky, I've never seen one like that. All right, onward. Okay, here's how it looks assembled. So the I.O. board goes back here. They give you red and black nuts for the TRS jacks <clears throat> so you can color code your ins and outs. And you have these three things that we soldered on um, that screws it to the case. It's actually very solid. Um, and then you put the nuts on. And of course, the rubber feet go on first and the switch. And then the trolley bus, you put on this cover over the voltage regulators that says hot surface. So I guess so you don't drop things on them and they get hot and stuff. Um, and then it just screws into like the, the built-in standoffs that are on the case. Plug them together with the Molex cable. Lastly is the rails. Um, you get to choose whether you want the one euro in the middle or at the top. Pretty sure I've decided to put it on the top. Um, so yeah, they're a little challenging to screw in. From the other video, it looks like every other rail that I've used before. So like here's the cases I've built. It's, it's like self-tapping screws. So it's a little struggle to get started and then they go right in. So here we go with that. Okay, all done. Um, so I did have to troubleshoot a bit. Um, not all four LEDs lit up whenever I uh, first turned it on. See, this is what it's supposed to do. All four. And it's got four test points there where you can check the voltages and they're all right. Um, I just re-soldered some stuff on the bottoms of these um, regulators. Um, I actually had a little bit of difficulty with soldering them in the first place. I don't know if it was just my solder or I needed more flux. I ended up on some of them that looked kind of weird. I used flux and redid the solder joints and then stuff started working. So that's all it was. But yeah, super solid. 
Um, when you put the rails in, leave them loose and then stick some modules in before you tighten it down just to make sure because they do twist. So, yeah. Um, I did go ahead and do the top row as the 1U, um, mostly because I might eventually get the Bifaco hex mix system and its expander actually goes above the mixer, so I would need it like that. And then I've got a pile of modules here and a few over here that I'm going to put in and we can take a look at it when I'm done. Here it is, finished and powered up. Finished for now, that is. Um, obviously, I'll be adding some more modules. I did decide to get the um, Bifaco Hexmix system, which will go here. And uh, otherwise, I have all my Bifaco things in here, along with uh, a few other things that didn't have any spot in any other case. So I was going to show you real, real quick the one new stuff. So I've got the amp, which is a stereo input module, and it has an internal connection for these TRS jacks. And so the way it works is uh, each pair has this little, how many pins is it? Six pin header right there. And in this case of this, it connects to that. And then these two jacks become balanced TRS inputs for that. And likewise with the output module has the same connector. So these two became balanced outputs from that. There's another set for this one to be balanced. They all also have them to be unbalanced as pairs. And then there's also one that is for the first four. So apparently some module uses that. Other than that, there's headers for the MIDI jacks and I believe some USB stuff. The USB B port has two options. There's a switch. You can connect it to the internal A port. So if you want to pass something through, an example would be like if I was putting these in there, which I'm not, I could hook up the USB inside the case and then it would, could connect on the back to the computer. Or you can switch it and it hooks to, I believe, something else. I'm not entirely sure. And then the A ports can be charging ports and whatnot. So anyway, that's kind of a quick overview of how that works. And then there's three separate places to plug stuff in, as you saw. So there's a few power connectors on there and a whole ton on the trolley bus. So there you go. Um, I'll be filling it up with more stuff that probably makes noise. I, I think my plan is I'm trying to build kind of a live setup to be able to perform some of my music. So between this and my other portable case, I'll do like a lot of mixing and effects and maybe some drums on this case and more of the sound making stuff on the other case. But I'm sure I'll make videos about that whenever I finally do it. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.